Hello, everybody. How's it going? My name is David Rue. I'm the Public Engagement Associate at Seattle Art Museum, and I'm so excited to welcome you to the 31st panel, embodying the 31st panel, in celebration of Jacob Lawrence, The American Struggle, currently on view at Seattle Art Museum. This monumental show reunites Lawrence's iconic 30 panel series, which capture very important moments of American history. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that Sam is located on the ancestral lands of the Coast Salish peoples. We respect and honor these relationships with these communities, both past, present, and future. I'd also like to share, if you don't know, that Sam is open again, and although at limited capacity, we are very excited to have folks back into the gallery seeing shows such as Jacob Lawrence, The American Struggle, as well as Barbara Earl Thomas, The Geography of Innocence. So why are we here tonight? What are you about to see? So for this series, I've invited dance artists, Mikhail Kaliste, Gilbert Small, and Marco Ferroni to create three brief, informal, and personal responses to the exhibition. I asked each dancer if Lawrence were to create a 31st panel today, what would be depicted and how might you translate those ideas into your dancing bodies? Now, if you follow Sam on social media or if you've been to the exhibition already, you have already seen these three dancers share their own personal responses via spoken word in our community response spaces in the galleries. So tonight we'll be seeing each solo performed back to back and each solo is performed in silence. It was really, really, really important to me to have the dancers create something that is meaningful to them without having to worry about producing this highly produced finished product. And then after you see each solo, I'm gonna be having a really informal conversation with one of the dancers, the forever iconic Marco Ferroni. So I just wanted to quickly say, if you came here expecting three fully produced evening length works, and then followed that with a really a formal conversation with the curator and the artists, you're in for a treat because it's gonna be a little bit different than that. Um, throughout the evening, as you're watching these solos, feel free to show some love to the dancers in the chat as you're watching. And I also want you all to think about how one singular idea can show up in multiple, multiple, multiple different manifestations. You know, there's so much multiplicity within Lawrence's work, and I really wanted to kind of reflect that in, in these solos and in this project. So keep that in mind as you're watching all of these. We're also going to have some time towards the end of Marco and I's chat for some Q&A if you have any questions that you would like to ask the dancer. But I just ask that you hold off for the Q&A towards the end just to make sure that we don't lose anybody's questions um, in the chat throughout the evening. I want to send another huge thank you to Michael B. Main for um, the support, the tech support for all of this incredible work. He's amazing. And without further ado, I say we set it off. Let's watch these videos and we'll come back. Thank you all so much for joining us. Please enjoy.
Wow. And we are back. Let's show some love for those three dancers in the chat. All right. So um, the first solo that you saw was Mikhail Kalist. The second one was Gilbert Small. And the third one is Marco Ferroni, who I am joined with tonight for our little chat. Marco, first of all, congratulations. You're iconic. Um, initially, there's two things I want to hear. I'd love for you to just share a little bit about who you are, what you do, all that good stuff. And it's your first time seeing all of these kind of back to back. So I would love to hear who you are and what your initial thoughts are. What are your initial reactions to seeing all of those ideas show up in three different ways? Absolutely. Um, hello, uh, my name is Marco Farroni. Uh, I am a dance artist based in Seattle. I also dabble in a little bit of styling, um, a little bit of curation, a little bit of uh, just really exploring the expansiveness that is my um, multiplicity, uh, both artistically and um, I guess historically, just human, really. Um, and to answer the second question, I <sighs> that's kind of the beauty of dance. This is why I love dance so much and just like um, artistic expression. Um, uh, the fact that we can gather and uh, accumulate um, our own ideas or perspective of what we experience um, both from the exhibition um, at the museum and also bringing forward our own um, identities in, in, our, in our art form and medium. Um, so that it was really exciting to watch and, and see how diverse our perspectives are um, as movement artists who are engaging with uh, Jacob Lawrence's exhibition um, both as an inspiration and also a uh, guiding force for yeah. this particular project. Totally. I love that you said that because I was really particular as I was developing this and thinking about the dancers. I wanted them to be three people that I knew would create something different. And y'all all have a very unique and beautiful way of moving. And to see them all together was like this kind of gallery. It was like I was watching this kind of comic book moment, almost like I was in the show. So it was really cool to see that. And y'all looked amazing. And I like that there's so many different ways that can be interpreted. And even if you swapped the order, I feel like it would be experienced in a super different way. So I think that there's a lot of fun for that. Definitely, definitely. So I have some questions for you. And if you have any questions for me, of course, ask. But Absolutely. the first one is, OK, so once upon a time, you got an email from little old David Rue asking you to be a part of this project. And I'm wondering what made you say yes? And what were you, like, what were you initially interested in this whole thing? Yeah, when I got that email from legend, icon, <laughs> David Rue. Uh, what really made me agree to participate was um, I saw it as a, an opportunity for me to get to know uh, Jacob Lawrence. Um, I felt that I had a duty to uh, further expand my knowledge um, because a lot of his work is new to me. Um, so it, it was really, um, again, an opportunity for me to get to know another artist that is, and now that I've been um, doing some research and based on the work that I've seen so far, um, it, it feels like we're having conversations. Um, the subject matter that uh, Jacob Lawrence was depicting a lot of his work are things that I'm considering, I'm, you know, having conversations around, um, and to uh, have the opportunity to kind of be alongside Jacob Lawrence in, in, yeah. in a way um, that is just exciting. I feel honored also. Um, and I'm really excited and glad that you sent that email. Because <laughs> I'm not only learning by uh, like seeing the work and, and researching about who Jacob Lawrence is and was and um, the impact, uh, but also like, okay, how do I kind of find my purpose also um, mm. in, 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 in my practice? Yeah. Um, so that's- Love it. 
Well, talk about the show. What were your first impressions? You walked into the galleries, you saw it for the first time. What were your first reactions to the American struggle? What were your thoughts? Um, so I, maybe I want to, I want to be at the end, like after I went through the whole exhibition, cause I, it felt to me really emotional, uh, especially the way, um, it was curated and, uh, it was suggested that you follow this, the sequence of, of how it was being presented. Um, and I, in, in walking and seeing, um, the 30 panels, you know, back to back. Um, some of the panels are uh, really, what would be the word? Maybe I wanna say emotionally driven in, mm -hmm. in a way that um, it asks you to, to remember or like, you know, it, it brings something that maybe uh, you've learned about it but you forgot uh, uh kind of some beautiful painful truths um and maybe that's where the emotion comes in seeing yeah. them back to back um it was such a beautiful show I, I i think i love the fact that they were smaller paintings um like it doesn't feel intimidating sometimes yeah. i think those big large uh works could uh, be so massive, um, but I, I felt invited up to to see the work um, in a way. Um, it was beautifully colored, also. Like I, I, I think the coloring that Jacob Lawrence um, uses in his work is really immaculate. Like it's amazing. Um, I feel like I was dancing afterwards, and I do that when I feel inspired. Mm. Uh, start um, thinking in dance, or um, using my body as a you know processing that kind of experience. So I, I feel like that sign that was a sign to oh I'm glad that I'm doing this. Um, All right, <laughs> <laughs> movement response because I'm already responding um, through movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I recommend everybody watching it. Um, please make sure you make your way to Sam uh, because it, it was really impactful. Yeah. Yeah, I always have to remind remind myself when I go into the galleries. These are like historical events that Lawrence like truly captured in time, and beyond like that, the reckoning and reminders of these things that this country has gone through. If you look at them as images, they're so beautifully composed that I myself can just get lost in like, yeah. how in the world did he make that red so red and that line so sharp? <laughs> then it feels so just natural. And then because if you want to go through the whole thing, it's like you're reading a book almost, and you have to get close. Yeah. to um, the images and you have to kind of move your body around to really get into it. So I feel like there's a supernatural tie between this particular show and the moving dancing body. So absolutely. And being being in the museum um, with other viewers right. um, exhibition, it, it feels very choreographed, like the way that, you know, people are following like assembly line almost yeah. like people are hopping in and like, you know, wandering off and coming back into this. Right. Kind of rotation of things um, mm -hmm. very much nice shout out to our exhibition design team <laughs> they'll work very hard on making sure that people follow the right track okay. so shout out to all of y'all that's a lot of work <laughs> all right so whether or not you decided to use this as your response i'm really curious to have you share if you think he were to create a 31st panel right now what do you think he would be depicting it can be as big or as small as you want. I know that there is a lot <laughs> of directions that you can go, but what are the first right. things that come to your mind? Okay, so I'm a Libra. So the first thing that I imagine with this question is that, is Jacob Lawrence like creating this 31st to, in 2021? Um, mm. And then is Jacob Lawrence the age that he would technically be in 2021 or like in the hundreds or <laughs> maybe like you know a age from when he created the uh, 30 yeah. let's the 30 say it's him when he was painting that and let's say it's 2021 like if you were to paint it today based on the events of the past okay. up to present day right um 
you might not like this answer, but <laughs> say it, say it, say it. Um, I don't think there will be a 31st panel. Mm. Um, I feel like maybe the fact that we are doing the 31st panel, it's the 31st panel because I think he, uh, based on, he already did 30. He could have easily done 30. <laughs> like my thinking is like, oh, mm, would there be a 31st? Um, and I want to say there there won't be a 31st uh, based on how the series are and how he composes the works. Um, that's my answer. Like 30 is a thing. Like it's, that's it. 30, 30, you get the point. You know what I mean? Like, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, like I mean, it, it will continue to follow the narrative, you know, the kind of momentum. Mm -hmm. and a lot of the things that we are seeing in the exhibition feels already contemporary. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, which is both sad and also kind of amazing um, because of, I mean, the American struggle. Like that's already kind of the title. Um, yeah. Well, you. I mean, you, I want to. Uh, I don't. Well, you know, thinking about it, I, I imagine if you were to make something that captured today, there's so many different things. I feel like number one in my imagination, um, I see some kind of image that's cyclical because mm -hmm. a lot of the works that he made, you know, years and years and years ago in this show, we're still talking about this like today in 2021. Mm -hmm. So I. I picture something that has some kind of circular or cyclical kind of nature to it to kind mm. of draw attention to the fact that like the more things change, the more they say the same. Um, and then I feel like, I mean, ideas of isolation might be captured because of COVID. Um, but then also I feel like there'd be no way that he could um, deny or not speak about the ways in which black bodies have been completely disrespected and treated within the past year and the way that the government and the legislature of this country kind of enables that. And I feel like Lawrence is such a genius that he would take all of those things and put it in an image that would make you spend time with the image while also making you think about the themes that are going on in this world right now, because there was a lot of stuff that happened, especially for artists as well. So I think that it would be a lot, um, but with his aesthetic, it would fall into place in such a way that you couldn't deny the beauty of it while also not being able to deny like the thought process that it would require for your viewing. Right. Yeah. So, Absolutely. you know, another thing though about that, like speaking of like the cyclical kind of nature, like all three of you have a really unique and distinct way of moving. Um, mm. And I, I'm curious about how you started. Like for folks that are not a dancer, like how do you go into a gallery, you see these things, you move your body through the space. What was your process like? Did you start with an image? Was there one particular panel that you liked or was it the whole exhibition? Um, definitely the entire exhibition, but I think something that I was really focusing uh, on was kind of the task of if there was a 31st panel, what would it be? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that what I've wanted to engage with was like, okay, what is contemporary to me? Um, and I can still use some of the practices that Jacob Lawrence might have used um, to my understanding, for example, like composition wise, uh, for uh, how much foreground versus things that are far away, um, yeah. figures in different parts of the canva of the canvas or, or paper, I think he used a lot of the time. Um, so that kind of started. And also, I imagined I would have been via Zoom. <laughs> but I, I kind of wanted to, in, in, in my video, actually, it, the base of it, it's a a recording of a Zoom meeting that I did with three devices placed um, in different parts of the studio that I was at, um, was uh, Spectrum Dance Theater, and also um, shifting or tilting a little bit of, of the camera's perspective so you can see um something that is uh, straightforward or in an angle a little slightly from below or above 
um, just because I saw a lot of um, like the way that Jacob Lawrence places the audience in 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 when we get to see through this kind of window. Um, that was really interesting to me. And how can I play with things that kind of appear and disappear? Um, also isolation um, to kind of play into that it is a solo and it is commenting on Zoom and you know COVID-19 and also um, what happens when you combine all of these things yeah. to, to create maybe a sort of collective or um, group of sorts, um, which, you know, even thinking about 2020 and uh, the kind of uprisings that were happening and the yeah. uh, coming together from being kind of pulled apart to, mm -hmm. to uh, isolation to then coming together and, um, you know, kind of yeah. creating friction. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely saw that multiplicity because your solo was almost a quartet because it was you, multiple Marcos on the <laughs> at the same time, which I thought was really fascinating. Um, is there anything else you want to share about that in terms of the multiplicity of you being on the screen at the same time? Um, yeah, maybe I don't even think they're me. Or, or maybe, yeah. maybe they are, you know, versions. Um, but what are they, who are, what are they, who is that? <laughs> who are they, who are they? Who is that uh, girl? <laughs> um, I don't know who they are per se, but I do think that they existed in different, like I, I also wanted to be in different places where I can uh, imagine that I'm either teleporting or, um, visiting or re it, could, it could be like a memory almost of sorts um because i also felt that uh experiencing the the exhibition um seeing some some of the work that was historical in 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 nature um and other things like the landscapes that then became um maybe like escape or something um so there was a lot of of that kind of conversation mm -hmm. uh, back and forth of like. Yeah. I felt like when I was watching yours, it was kind of like watching the, the cerebellum, like like thoughts <laughs> happening, like different right. thoughts happening all in the same kind of shell or frame. I'm also curious, you have such iconic fashion and style. Will you share why you chose to wear what you're wearing in the suit? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thank you. I take it. Um, <laughs> all, the, all the painting were so brightly colored um and i kind of was like um i'm gonna do the opposite and just make everything really dark um and, and there there's there's that point of just like okay how can i um just shift maybe the the coloring of things um but outside of that i love i love fabrics i yeah. love things um, that are textured or, or material that, that feels um, maybe not so, that, it, I don't know, that takes, takes, takes the image somewhere else. Uh -huh. like, so I had this, this um, shirt that was pleated, uh, but it, it kind of opened up when yeah. there was some type of rotation mm -hmm. happening. Um, and I think once I paired it with this very like casual dress down situation that was happening in the studio, it created um, a dynamic for me viewing it, especially against the white walls when yeah. you see the sharp uh, black, both shiny because my pants or, or the shorts that I was wearing are are really like um, patent. Blackered, honey. They were yeah. <laughs> <laughs> patent a little bit. And then you have yeah, this really like, still. You still, yeah. Um, so then there, there was kind of a formality versus informality happening with the sweats versus this um, leather uh, black uh, outfit situation. Yeah. Um, it's really about texture and layering because there there was a lot of a lot of the outfits that Jacob Lawrence depicted. They were, yeah. Um, I feel really fashion forward and mm -hmm. couture. <laughs> Listen, honey, <laughs> it's redress. Well, speaking of like form and composition and all of that stuff, I 
felt like you talked about feeling that, but, and I know that sometimes as dancers, it's kind of hard to talk about this, but I'm really curious about your body was moving in a very specific way and you were creating a very kind of specific architecture with the lines and shapes that you created. Is that just naturally how you move or were you specifically thinking about, I want my body to create these shapes, to create this idea? Like why was your body moving like that? Um, my, my practice relies a lot of uh, in improvisation and intuition. Um, mm -hmm. So I make sure that I have a lot of information uh, circling like in my mind about uh, what I've experienced, um, the things that I've uh, encountered and um, so and so and so. But something that I remember it was that all the images had had a lot of movement or um there there you can see that they were some of them in motion um mm -hmm. and i wanted to play with this idea that is constantly moving that you yeah. you never stop and you know and i love the, the fact that you said circles or, or um yeah yeah I, uh, thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. like yeah. i there's a lot of um, circularity in the movement mm -hmm. itself that I both one enjoy doing, yeah. um, and my body uh, finds a lot of um, access in that. Uh, and also, I think I wanted to capture no, like constant movement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, based on the on the work that, that that they felt like they were moving or like um mm -hmm. especially it's kind of dark but the the kind of the stabbings like yeah you know i'm i can imagine that there were f reactions after those you know those things were penetrating the the mm -hmm. figure um yeah. so that's why there's like it doesn't stop until yeah the end does the work have a title the work does not have a title. Um, I mean, I guess the 31st, yeah, it, it, was, it was created for this. Um, and, and there are some ideas that I'm uh, playing with uh, in in other projects that I'm doing. But I do think that um, this partic these two minutes and, and, and 40, I think two seconds, that mm -hmm. that's what I did, um, encapsules a particular like yeah. it, it is inspired by the exhibition in you know it is in a response to yeah. um that work i don't know does that does that answer yeah that? Of, course, of course it's like this was created specifically for like you exactly. made it in conversation with an exhibition that you saw inspired by these themes and ideas which That's makes right. my heart so happy <laughs> i just really <laughs> love the idea i'm trying to find as many ways as i can to a just celebrate the incredible black artists that dance in seattle and work in seattle but then also find ways to have active conversations between the visual and the performing arts because you can always have a dancer in the space and get the leg up and do a turn, but if it's not in direct conversation with the show, I, in my humble opinion, I feel like it doesn't have the same kind of weight and whether or not the audience like understands that right away, because I don't think that any of you like literally mimicked what was seen in a, in a panel, but I feel that inspiration is so clear, but you all have such a distinct voice that it went in different directions, but it's also very clear that you made something based on the, on the exhibition. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For y'all that are watching, we're getting towards the end. We have a few more questions, but if you have any questions that you want to pop into the Q&A, now would be your chance. Um, Marco, I have another question for you. I'm Evan ready. Answer. Um, talk about um, anything that you found particularly maybe frustrating about the project or particularly um, exciting or fulfilling, both or either. <sighs> Um, challenging or fulfilling. I think the doing, mm -hmm. the doing of it was really fulfilling. Um, the dancing of it was really fulfilling. Yeah. Um, seeing it come together, seeing you know the other two videos and and making it like a, a whole sequential situation was it was really um, exciting and rewarding. Um, the challenge. Hmm. 
I don't know if there was a challenge. I think when when, when you were invited to explore your practice with some guidelines, it's always fun. Mm -hmm. um, I like. I kind of love the fact that there was no sound. The, yeah. You know. You know. I I I also enjoy sound mm -hmm. and layering in that way. Um, but then when you take away the sound, um, it, it does something else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was going to be my next question. Like, if you yeah. could have sound, what would the soundscape be? Because I have a very, I, when I watch yours, I have <laughs> sound, but I'm curious about yours. I'm curious about yours. You go first. <laughs> <laughs> um, sound. You know, because it wasn't part of it, I don't think I considered it. Mm -hmm. Um, there, it would have have to been something in relationship to the date or the decade that the exhibition was uh, created and, you know, premiered, yeah, yeah. Uh, just so we can, maybe I, maybe so I can kind of, um, anchor, uh, something to a, a particular, uh, uh, what is the word? In, like time, environment, yeah, an era, uh, an era. You know, the United States. You know, yeah. also um, maybe sound will have to do with yeah. more so, more more that than like, oh, I like this how this sounds. Right, right. I picture I have two scenarios, <laughs> and I think that they're both um, inspired by the lacquered pants moment, like that whole look and seeing that, especially like the multiple figures of you. I either picture like heavy kind of like industrial sounding, semi borderline, like electronic, like really kind of club kid music. I don't know why my okay. mind goes there. But then on the other hand, I also hear like high drama cathedral, like operatic sounding music that swells and maybe it starts really small and then it kind of grows and by the end it's like blasting but i don't know those when i watched yours in particular those are the sounds that i heard that sounds amazing i would i would love to experience those sounds like if it was a in in person adaptation of sorts right you know because yeah. hopefully <laughs> Back in the day we would have had y'all perform these inside right. galleries and i think that that would have been really really dope because my fantasy whenever I kind of develop these programmings if like a painting fell off the wall and like <laughs> and then all of a sudden like you get like the figures up and dancing and moving throughout the space so hopefully That's we can crazy. one day reprise these solos and y'all can come back all right so we have a question here from Antoine what is your process like when creating movement and vocabulary What is the process like when creating movement and vocabulary? I don't know if I create movement, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I, it is an improvisational, um, intuitive manner. I mean, I guess a bachelor's degree, you know, <laughs> like all, all these summer intensives, all these training, all these experiences in, you know, impact the way that um, my body, and hmm. now I want to say also other things that are like, oh, is that contradictive of that? Um, you know what? You better say. I, I am multiple in my experience again. All right. We can mm -hmm. do that. So yeah. I, what is the process? D doing, mm -hmm. I think doing, dancing, recording, hitting play, hitting record, and, mm -hmm. and, and doing it until um, it feels like I've achieved what I was looking for. Ah, I see, I see. Um, and then, you know, once you have all the material and then you go, go through and then to me, when I'm editing, uh, especially now that everything is video form, mm -hmm. um, it is also an, an intuitive process where yes. it, it, some things make more sense to me than the other ones uh, for whatever reason. And then I look at it and it's like, ah, and there's other versions of these things that you know I didn't. I ended up going with this um, because of how he moves and how whatever. Um, so you start with like your moving body first. Like you get your answers from your body. You don't think about steps and say, "I wonder how that's going to look." Let me try it. 
Right. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I I I the video in the black, it was like 12, 1 a.m. Uh, you know, like it, it, my body at that time of the of the day is gonna be it's right. gonna be holding itself in it very different than if it's at, at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. Um so and I'm also interested in like what happens when you know if, if I'm thinking about this now, I wanna do it now. Um, right, right. then wherever that takes me and uh, those histories that live in my body already indicate or drive where the movement um, is going or it, it wants to go. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're describing the process of so many different types of artists, you know, like dancers have that same practice, but also like visual artists and painters. Absolutely, are right. Also connected, and I'm so fascinated by that. Um, do you even think it's possible to put language to the kind of movement that you like to embody the most? Like I'm a this kind of dancer, or do you think that's not even possible? So I saw this uh, conversation that um, actually, actually uh, Susan Lee Foster had at uh, UCLA and it, it, it was a lot, but something that I kind of took away and resonated with me deeply was that, you know, dancing as thinking, mm. um, movement itself being the process of thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and as soon as that was mentioned in the uh, lecture demonstration uh, that she was doing, uh, it, it, it resonated with me. I felt like I found languaging for what I said that I am often involving myself in with movement like it is it is a thinking process that is uh physicalized that i'm not only depending on my brain but that you know the memory that my body has yeah. um yeah i love i feel like when i watch you dance it's like having a conversation with you without talking you know like i can communicate with you without having to oh. say hi what time's the bus coming but like I can right it's, it's literal thought in motion i think we have time for like Two more questions, so I want to get to another one. I'm curious how you all experienced going through the sequence and what you felt when you saw the 20th panel, the one that was dark with no figures. Well, that's one, that's my favorite panel. Actually. Yes. <laughs> By the way, I think the 20th is the one that is lost. Yeah. I think so. Um, um, Sorry, I got I got stuck on the panel. Uh, how <laughs> we went through the sequence and oh, the sequence of of yeah. the exhibition. Did you go one by two by three by four? Or did you kind yes. of? Yes, you did. Cool. I did one, two, three, four until thirtieth. Um, and also the the three artists that I think they um, yeah the contemporary artists who are also uh -huh. amazing. Yeah. Um, how did I experience it? <sighs> I, I felt like I was in a trance, like I was, there was a narrative that was set maybe by the sequentiality of, of how the, of, of the, of the um, panels. Um, and then you get to the 20th where there's nothing, which is always exciting to me because then for, to me, um, it feels like there's so much room to wonder, mm -hmm. like, ooh, like, who has it or like yeah. <laughs> um yeah or like what what was the panel um we have some descriptions but um what happened like where is it what is yeah or, or just or just the concept of missing or, or like you know the and it, it just makes me think of like the things that that we again forgetting or um yeah have lost uh maybe in other um lives or you know, yeah, I, you know totally. you know we kind of kind of the, the forgotten or the the missing um mm -hmm. the others um kind of thing i love it i um i think i went through it like i was kind of reading a book like a comic book almost like i was like this is page one and then i would go back because i didn't go the first time i saw it i did not go in order at all i just oh. <laughs> the galleries and then when i went back i was like oh, wow this is really like uh kind of like a i don't want to say it's not the right way to say, it, but almost like a history book. Like you're kind of like looking through and seeing these moments that actually happened depicted in really specific, specific ways. Yeah.
Um, Marco, we are gearing towards the end of the night. I want to take some time. Do you have any questions for me? And if there are any questions out there in the interwebs, feel free to ask. We probably have time for like two more questions. I have a question for you, David Rue. Yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, when engaging in your curatorial practice, because this is uh, one of many programs that you've uh, curated for Sam, um, what are the things that you consider uh, when it's in relation to an, an art piece that has existed for even longer than we've existed? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, I wonder about about what it what is your process? Um, like, yeah. Um, it's it's well, it's it's a lot of things. I think first, first of all, whenever we have an exhibition, me and the education and public engagement department, we always meet as a team to kind of suss out and flesh out um, themes or ideas that resonate within the show. And then I always try to think about what is that theme? How can I translate it into performance? And then how can I use that kind of performance opportunity to not be a performance, but actually an opportunity for me to engage with the local dance community in Seattle and also find ways to make ties between like painting and dance or visual and performing arts. Those things are things that I always think about. I always also center uh, racial equity in my work. So I always think about how can I get black dance artists or artists of color into the galleries to pop off and do what they do and share the work that they do and like have the audiences just really understand that like, we are not watching this performance. We are bearing witness to an artistic process that's mm -hmm. already happening. And I'm just trying to like put up the magnifying glass to amazing work. But it's also really, really important for me to always have it be directly tied to the exhibition. I never like to do it willy nilly where it's like, come do this solo that's not connected to it. I mean, I'm even thinking about things like when you perform for the Jeffrey Gibson exhibition or when Mikael performed for Flesh and Blood, all of those things, y'all were invited for specific reasons. And every single time you performed, there was this different kind of prompt or narrative that I gave you to say, here's the idea, play around with it however you want. Um, was that clear as mud? <laughs> I hope I said something cohesive. Clear. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's like, it's it's so much. My favorite part of my work that I do at Sam is commissioning dance works and having y'all be in conversation with um, the works on view um, on the walls. Because I really picture like the painting falls. It's like midnight, you know, like midnight, 1 a.m. The painting falls. Somehow music starts. <laughs> So and there's a camera. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> the camera is HD. You're da you're dressed beautifully. You perform, da -da -da -da, and then like as the sun rises, like the frame goes back on the wall, and it's like back into the back into the thing. Wow, that's that's already a concept right there. You know, but yeah. That's my process. Marco, I want to thank you so, so, so much for being a part of this project with me. It's always such a pleasure to work with you at SAM and for Projects Beyond. I was so, so lucky to be able to do this with you tonight. Much love to all of the other dancers. If you would like to see this work again, or if you know somebody that missed tonight's chat, Fear not, because all of these works are also going to be uploaded on Sam's social media channels and um, our blog as well. Um, so take a peek for that. Otherwise, I want to thank each and every single one of you that joined us tonight. I want to send another huge thank you to the one and only Michael B. Main for all of the incredible tech support. And um, thank you to all of you for joining us. Y'all have an amazing night, and we will see you soon. Bye. Bye.